hello and thank you. Thank you for joining us on our short film show. Because of you, our episodes have received more than 200 views throughout our platforms. We hope you can continue to watch, share, and like the many short films that we're talking about this season. Now, back to the show. Welcome to the spookiest season of the year, where you can see ghosts under poorly ripped sheets and children as frightening as the horror movies that make us. This week, we'll have a villain that seems to be falling just short of his evil ways. Please enjoy An Evil Man, directed and written by Niles Maxwell. This is the rot of the world where old parts die to be buried alive. Let's have a look around. Honey, I'm home! <laughs> Here, we have a barrel filled with me. It's a, it's a mean, I me. <laughs> Smelly poison. There you go. <laughs> I feel it. It's the poison. It is the toxicism fulfilling my veins. You just have to believe uh, the toxic. Toxic, you know toxicology. You know the toxic. I think that's something with my voice. <laughs> Not me. Uh, could you stay there? That's not real. That's breakfast. <laughs> stay there. Fast. See? Give me what? What? Brain freeze! Well, that's the thing, you know. You you have to eat ice cream, and you can only get ice cream at a store. Do what I do, what I do, what I do. <laughs> Nothing to it, but it's sweet. That tune goes right to your feet. Do what I do, made a hit with a girl. They have their hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cause they're all, they're all, whatever will be. 
Nothing to it, but it's sweet. That tune goes right to your feet. Do what to do, made a hit with the girls. They had their hair bobbed and gave him the curls. Oh, how he blew. That do what to do, what to do. Not to 99 plus tax. No tax. No, no, no tax. No, no. Free. Yeah. Free. Yes. Free. Free. Yes. Yes. Free. 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 We eat together. <laughs> now, in order to get brain freeze, you have to eat a lot of it at once. Uh, oh, oh, oh no, you... Uh, you... You... You didn't get chocolate, did you? God! No! This What? You are dessert! Me? Nothing to it, but it's sweet. That tune goes right to your feet. Do what to do, made a hit with the girls. They had their hair bobbed and gave him the curls. Oh, how he blew. That do what to do, what to do. This week is writer and director Niles Maxwell. He went to the School of Art Institute of Chicago and received a degree in creative writing. He was an improv actor who found his love for writing and wrote An Evil Man in an award-winning drama, Half Brothers. He now lives in southwest Germany where he writes, directs, and produces through his company Bohemian Entertainment. Please welcome, all the way from Germany, Niles Maxwell. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for coming here. Thanks for having me. So when you have this production company, is An Evil Man, was that one of your first? No, I must have shot, I must have shot 14, 15 short films before An Evil Man. Um, so I was just short film at that time when I was living in, this was in Chicago, I was shooting not to, again, short films, I don't think, are good vehicles for making money, but they're good for for testing, um, developing characters, testing things, um, getting gaining experience, um, challenging yourself, doing things that you can't, you know, you wouldn't be able to do otherwise, and 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 so on. So, um, an evil man was just for fun, but it was also let's see what this character is about. Because even if you write it, you don't always know. <laughs> you don't know what it's going to be until you can then see it after you've shot it and say, oh, that's, that's what this character is doing. Um, the character is an idiot. <laughs> um, he is a complete idiot. And, and if I were to say, okay, what's the, what's the target audience? 
um, I wanted to also shoot something that would be fun for my preteen sons <laughs> who were must have been, you know, uh, uh, 11 and, and, and 13 at the time or something, uh, 12, 10, 12 years old. And this, this, is, the, this, was the, <laughs> this is the target audience, um, uh, you know, 12 year old boys. Um, so, yeah. Did you expect it to take off as it did? Because now you have a website, you have multiple episodes. Yeah, so it was so much fun to shoot that we kept, we kept shooting and we shot several other episodes until we shot the episode called Brain, An Evil Man Brain Freeze, <laughs> um, which we finally shot in, in color. Um, and, um, and also, the, the, I wouldn't say that the, the, the short films took off necessarily, but they, there was some momentum behind them. And then I ended up writing a feature length script for An Evil Man, um, which I will develop eventually uh, and, dev and wrote a second, or at least outlined the second, uh, An Evil Man 2. <laughs> so, so yeah, there, the, the idea was then to create a website that had been created by the fictional character. So a terrible website, a website that, you know, was poor is poorly executed where links don't work and where <laughs> where anybody who lands on it may end up thinking that oh this guy is for real um the, this an evil man is a real person um but of course he's not yeah i i went on your website and i was clicking on things and i was like why can't i do anything on this <laughs> how did you come up with this character um so an evil man was an outgrowth of a connection I had with a particular actor. So um, I had a reading of a feature length film I had written. Um, I had written the first draft and I wanted to hear it performed by actors before I made my next round of edits. And one of the actors who showed up um, played multiple characters, read for multiple characters in that Western uh, Gringo Primero. And he, I noticed while he was reading, in addition to the helpfulness of them actually, of the actors actually performing the roles for the, for the script, I noticed that Andre Holitzi the, is the name of the actor, Andre Holitzi played evil characters particularly well. Um, and I had never met him before. He came for a reading uh, from, he was a theater performer at the Cima Theater Tübingen in Tübingen in the uh, university town of Tübingen. And he, he came and I noticed that about him and, and then I forgot about it um, for multiple months, uh, maybe even half a year. And then I thought, you know, I started to get the urge because I was doing a lot of writing. I started to get the urge to work with actors again. And um, because I love to work with actors as a director, I, I thought of him then at that point and I thought, well, what kind of short can I shoot with an evil character in it? And from there, I thought, well, what if I just create an evil character and call him, you know, an evil man? <laughs> so I wanted to shoot something surreal and something comedic. And, um, uh, and so that's how it, it sort of stemmed from his ability to me observing his ability to, to perform evil characters that I created this evil character. Um, and of course, he's not really evil. He, he attempts to be evil. He attempts to do dastardly deeds, but he always uh, is thwarted in the end out of his own stupidity. Um, that, that was the, the central idea um, that, uh, that uh, helped me to to develop the character. And the idea was just, it was just for fun. I wasn't trying to do a series or anything. I thought I'll, I'll just shoot two shorts all at once. Uh, I'll do it in a bizarre way. I won't record the sound. I'll record it, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll dub the sound over and I'll record it in Super 8 black and white um, without sound. And so that's what I did. I just went out with the minimal budget and, and, and shot this the first two episodes, which were very small, short, three minutes or so. Do you still write how you wrote back then? 
by choosing characters? That's how I started when I was a teenager. So when I first started shooting movies, I was 15, 14, 15 or so, growing up in Alaska, in Anchorage, Alaska, where there was nothing to do. And, um, but I would, I would get the neighborhood kids together. And of course, if, you're, if you don't know who's going to be in the movies that you're shooting, um, you have to wait until everybody's there. And then once everyone was there that we could find, my younger brother and um, his friends and my other neighborhood friends, um, once everyone was there, then you would, I would create the story with them as, and, and I would be behind the camera, but they would be the characters. So then I would, okay, who are you gonna play? What are you gonna play? And we would develop the story that way. So um, that for me is a very natural or organic way of, of creating stories um, that stems from my early experiences in making movies. You have a lot of special effects makeup when you were doing Brain Freeze. Were you able yes. to go in with that and like understand how to make the makeup yourself as well? No, I didn't do that. I, I had a makeup artist, um, uh, Melanie is her name. And um, she she's, she's into all of that kind of makeup and, um, uh, and blood and all of that good stuff. So I, I don't, I know what I want to see, but I don't, uh, I don't, I don't go in the details of how it done, it's done. I don't try to micromanage the people I'm working with or anything like that. Um, you know, let's make her <laughs> blind, basically. Let's make the zombie blind and let's make her um, as hideous as we can. And we, would do things like we had her, we had dental prosthetics. I mean, we had dental, a dental technician built her teeth for her, took a mold of her, of her teeth and then built teeth that fit her teeth perfectly. And then we had her chew black licorice. And so you'll see in the scenes where she's, um, in the scenes where she's in the supermarket, she actually spits out what looks like insects or, or some kind of you know, black uh, uh, snakes or something. You see her when she's talking, she's spitting out. Um, it was supposed to be like, just, I don't know. We didn't even know what it was. We were like, is this, this is part of her innards that are coming out of her mouth as she speaks, you know? So um, that's what we did uh, for, for the, for, to make her seem more grotesque. And then, of course, you had her eating the ice cream, which was just like everywhere. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So the idea was somewhere when I wrote this, this feature length script, we or actually in the second episode, he's in a cafe and we had talked about the character. Andre and myself had talked about the character. And I said, let's give him a phobia of chocolate like he doesn't like chocolate he hates the taste of it he's disgusted by it and and then let's make him eat chocolate um or drink chocolate in the in this case um but la chocolate laxative that he's trying to give to someone else because he's trying to convince that other person that it's not a laxative <laughs> which is <laughs> is uh, very counterproductive right so so um therefore that comes up again that she chooses, the zombie chooses chocolate ice cream. Um, and that's the flavor he's most, it, it, which he detests the most. Did you want to leave the audience in suspense at the end then? Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, I knew that it was the last short that we would shoot of An Evil Man um, because, uh, I had it had enough basically, <laughs> or we'd had, had had enough and we needed to think about maybe shoot, getting a feature off the ground for it. Um, so, so yeah, I thought, well, let's kill him off, but not really kill him off. Um, let's just make it ambiguous. Is there any tricks that you'd usually tell up and coming screenwriters to write comedies? I can think about a couple techniques that are used in improv, for example, that, that lend themselves well to um, comedic stories. So one of the techniques is to 
introduce something that's comedic mm -hmm. and then let your audience forget about it and then bring it back again if it's and, and if it's working let's say um and bring it back again and bring it back again um that's one technique that if they've laughed once on stage thinking about it in terms of stage it's good to use that again um but that requires the actor or the actor writer on stage to be conscious enough of um the audience to know what worked and what didn't that won't translate well into scripts right but the uh, the technique of bringing something back that's comedic um works in in, in comedic writing as well uh, the best comedies are also there's some real emotion underlying them and um that's that's part of it too that it, that the characters we need to feel for the characters or we need to hate the characters or we need to love the characters um in a real way based on real um emotional the emotional experience of the character um themselves in in the story so uh, that it's not just about gags or it's not just about um situation comedy it's also related to the characters themselves and their their real experiences um so i think um not it's, it's important to not neglect that element that human element in comedy a lot of those like steps reminded me of episode three <laughs> shall witness evilness upon evilness with my new evil badness idea. My popularity has exceeded upon, well, historic. <laughs> Moments before, back then, <laughs> my Recognizers are everywhere. Spies? I see you. I see you. But no more. For an evil man has a plan. Got the rhymization on there? Rhymization on the first word and the third word they're the same <laughs> and you gotta you know it's just a little ah, for the sophisticationable on you guys high powered electronic razoring device for removal of hairs <laughs> <laughs> I shall not be recognized for my evil self on the street while walking. <laughs> but that's not all. No. I shall steal the electronic power from someone else. <laughs> See? Oh. No, no trespassing. Hoo, hoo, hoo. But not for an evil man. See what happens when you leave the window open, Mrs. Parker? Uh, that window is open for so all of us to use the insides. <laughs> Extension cable for power stealage. 
So, look at this. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Put it in here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> now, where's this thing? Here. <laughs> Disguise is no, is no disguise. 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 <laughs> 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 Wasn't so bad. I wonder oh, you open the next door and just open the doors, and then oh. you've got oh, the. Yeah. I am an evil man. I'm standing here in front of the Stiff's church. Stiff, where the dead peoples are lying. Dead bodies, dwarves, witches, hangmen, undertakers. <laughs> this is dead world. <laughs> now, that I... Uh, have murdered my hairs to death. I find it most appropriationating to uh, <laughs> drop them, not from the only most deathly place of this little purgatory, no, but from the most highest tower of this woebegone town. <laughs> I shall spread my itchiness all upon this tiddly place. And while they are eating their ice cream holders, on a tiddly stroll, my hatching itchies shall fall upon them their little time of happy feelings. I have been known to suffer from certain spinny high place symptomations. <laughs> but no more. That doesn't mean I shall give up. Oh no. <laughs> I will not give up. 
Nothing shall stop me from spreading my evil itches upon them. Look at this. Look at it. All those little spinny, grinding, munching. <laughs> Do you feel it? <laughs> oh, it's turning and munching. You put your finger in it and then it crunches. You feel the crunch, how it munches and grinds and makes everything to dust, turns it to dust, you know, this sprinty. Yeah, <laughs> you. it's just a thing. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, pretty interesting thing. Oh, wow. Oh, this is the, the coffin room place. The ancient of the hanging kings where they, they brought them in their coffins and hung them up because they got hung. Oh, look, there's the real coffins. Oh, my God. Look at that fence. Oh, they, they took that from jail. It's the Original jail fence. The real stuff. Wow. children's playground over there. <laughs> lots of mommies. Lots of mommies with their, with their little ice cream holders, right? <laughs> oh, I made some chocolate cakes. Well, I don't like the chocolate cake. I don't want the chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> you don't? No, I don't. Well, maybe you need a little lesson, huh? Maybe you need a little lesson. <sighs> I shall give you a lesson you shall not forget! Sprinkly! Sprinkly! <laughs> okay, just don't look down.
just have to wait. Wait for the <laughs> destructionistism. Just fall and float and do its evil work. <laughs> oh. Oops! <laughs> A lot of those, like, steps reminded me of episode three in An Evil Man because you have him shaving off his head and you have the hair and him running up the tower, throwing it down. You forget it, about it completely as he's running back down. And then all of a sudden, it hits him again. And you just see his whole sadness in his face. And it was like the most devastating emotion you could see from him. Yes, that was, a, that was fun. So there, that would have been, yeah, the third one was where he shaves his head off, hair off. He steals the electricity, the electric power, from some random place and shaves his head. And of course he cuts himself multiple times in the process and blood runs down his head, um, a ridiculous amount of blood. Um, and then he goes in the next episode, the fourth episode, he goes to the top of the Stiftskirche, the, the Stifts church in Tübingen, um, the top of the tower and, and throws, he's talking about the terrible thing that he's going to take his hair and throw it down onto all these mothers with all their ice cream holders, he calls them, the ice cream <laughs> cones, he calls them ice cream holders. Uh, he's gonna throw his, his, his hair down on it. It's gonna, it's gonna be terrible for them and they're gonna, you know, so the evil things that he's trying to do are really not that evil. Um, they're not that terrible, but yeah, he, he thinks it's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be so great to see these mothers suffer and um, then, yeah, the hair floats down slowly and he rushes down and he is the victim of his own uh, nefarious deeds. Um, what is some of the things that you say to your student then? So I will suggest, for example, that they read bad scripts um, as well as the, the scripts that they admire from movies that have been produced because there you always pick up on what's not working. And you don't often see what's not working in your own screenplays, but you certainly see in other people's scripts um, what isn't working. And um, so my, my students often work in groups of three and give each other feedback, read each other's scripts every week uh, and give each other feedback on the next 10 pages and the next 10 pages. And that often is a good, um, process for them to improve their screenwriting. And so if you're a screenwriter, I recommend that you join a screenwriting group of some sort to get that kind of feedback and also to be able to look at scripts that are not totally professionally written and to uh, begin to identify what's not working. And, and, and I, I tend to agree with um, Kurt Vonnegut that each in, this is for novel writing, but in, uh, in screenwriting, it's also the case that the story, that everything that you write should either move the story forward or reveal character. If it's not revealing character and not moving the story forward, then what is it, what are you doing? Um, and, and, and I think those two rules, if you can make sure that you're either revealing character or moving the story forward, um, that, that will make for a more compelling, a much more compelling um, screenplay. Would revisions then be the most important things in screenplays? Like just revisions? constantly, yeah, like constantly getting rid of the things that you don't need. Certainly, I mean, certainly I, I recommend, for example, um, actually I have the book here still, it's an old book, Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott, um, where you just, where you write down a shitty rough draft. She calls it a shitty rough draft. <laughs> um, uh, sorry if you can't say that, if I can't say that, but she, she, uh, she says, you know, get the shitty rough draft written. And then once it's down, once your rough draft is, is complete, then you can do all the editing and whatever. It, the hard part is getting the draft written. 
So a lot of people, a lot of writers just don't write. They just don't keep, there's, a, there's another term uh, in German called Sitzfleisch. And Sitzfleisch means you're, 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 you're sitting, you're, being, you're able to sit and sit and sit through the long period of time that is required to get a script done. And, um, and so, uh, so yeah, it takes that discipline of sitting down and writing every day. Um, and that's why I'll have my, my students write 10 pages a week. Oh, um, wow. Within five days, actually. The class is on Monday and they finish the draft of 10 pages by Friday. And then they submit it to their group members who then each of them read two other scripts, these 10 pages over the weekend. And on Monday, they, they, they share it with their, with their fellow students. So it's, um, so yeah, um, being able to write continually and then get that draft done. And then, yeah, then it's fun to, to revise and I'll revise the script 16, 17, 20 times before I feel it's ready to, to get out to people. So I do warn my students about that, that it's very hard to get scripts into the kind of condition where people will want to read them and not throw them in the waste bin. And you're starting a film currently, right? I'm working on, I have one film called Laundro Womb, a feature length film that's in development right now. I've been casting it and um, the working on the financing and working on completing the casting. Um, and that's also a surreal, but it's a surreal comedy also with Andre Holitzi playing the, the lead character. Um, it's a, it's a hard boiled detective comedy um, set entirely in a laundromat. How is the one room comedy going? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm finished with the, with the script, uh, but it will go through several more revisions. Um, even though I, in this case, I also did approached it in the way that I had approached an evil man in that I cast many of the characters prior to completing the screenplay. Um, and that I, I have found that that helps me um, to think about those characters as I'm writing. It's easier if I know who's going to be in the film. Um, of course, I can't do that with everybody because I need also name well-known actors to be in the film in order to secure the financing and distribution ultimately. Um, so some of the actors who are not yet cast, who are the, the actors who will help secure the financing, um, uh, of course I didn't, I wrote their characters without knowing who they would be. Um, but, but yeah, it's an approach, it's an unusual approach and it's not done, certainly not done in Hollywood. And, but I, I nevertheless, I think that if I'm able to, it, it's the kind of approach that I would often take, at least for comedies. Um, because I don't just write comedies, I write uh, a wide variety. I'm writing a, a, a wide variety of genres. I, I, I'm writing right now uh, a thriller and I'm writing a, um, a romantic comedy. <laughs> In addition to the action films that I've written and the, the drama, dramedies and drama, uh, films I've written and I've written a, a, a pilot episode to a series uh, set in medieval Iceland uh, and the Western that I mentioned. So I, I don't want to be fixed necessarily in one particular genre, but comedy is for me the most fun to write and the hardest, actually, it's one of the hardest genres to write, but it's fun for me to write. And, um, and when I write them, it would be great if I could continue uh, using this process of casting the actors prior to completing the script, um, which is hard to do. Who, you know, is anybody going to believe uh, that the script is good? We're just going to believe you as a director? Uh, it's hard to convince people, but um, so far so good. I've convinced several actors to to get on board, and they've read the script now, so then they're still on board. So. All right, I think we're running out of time for today. But Niles, thank you so much for coming on and talking about an evil man. Yeah. Thank you, Corey. And everyone at home, thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to see more, you can watch it at 
ourshortfilmshow.wordpress.com or on the Mount Blue website. Join us next time. All right, have a good one, everyone. Take care. Take care.